Hey friends, it's Tracy. I'm glad you're back again to watch more Spring and Easter DIY inspiration. Let's get into it. For this project, I am taking some uh, gingham carrots. These I got at Hobby Lobby, snagged those when they were on clearance. And so I want to make some neutral farmhouse decor. So what I did is I took out the green part and then I'm going to paint those a neutral color. The color of paint I used was sandstone. It is a chalk paint and just paint it on the carrot and it covered very well. And I know I do love my checks my gingham all of my different patterns but I had so many of these packages of carrots that I snagged on sale and so I wanted to uh, find something else to do with them so this is on as an idea and I hope that you're inspired too so guys what I did is I gave them a coat of sandstone chalk paint and just one coat real uh, you know good coverage did very well and so then I have this quarter full uh, burlap ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and it has the uh, wire on the ends so I didn't want that because it made that look like a band so I took off or cut off the edges of the wire and so then I am just gl hot gluing it down uh, just as I get it you know around the carrot For the rustic rope that's wrapped around my carrots, I have this sisal twine also from Hobby Lobby. I just stick it there in the top, then wrap it around, just giving it a dot of hot glue as I go around just to keep it in place. Now for the green tops of the carrots, the greenery also came from Hobby Lobby. I just cut off sprigs of that and hot glued it right there in the top. That fits very nicely in there. Now for a bow, I am just uh, taking some muslin fabric, just strips of that, as well as some ivory trim, as well as some uh, burlap. Uh, most all of this came from Hobby Lobby or either Walmart. So so I cut uh, the burlap just uh, as just a strip of it so that it would just sit right up in, underneath there. I just glued it right there to the top. And then uh, for the trim and the muslin fabric, I just made uh, it to wrap around the neck of the carrot where the greenery part is. And then uh, I also did a hemp cord or like jewel recording. Uh, I make uh, a small bow with that. I love all the different textures together and just love how all these high-end rustic carrots turned out. Project, I'm making a Happy Easter egg door hanger using one of those eggs from the Dollar Tree. Uh, now this has some glitter on it, so I'll be sanding that off. I'm also using all of the paper that I'm using today is from this paper stack that I got from Michaels um, a few years ago, but there are friends that still have it. They told me they still had it. All right, so what I did is I sanded off the majority of the glitter and then I wiped it off, you know, as best I could. And so then now I'm just kind of cutting uh, these papers down so that I can tear them. I'm going to tear the edges and I, I did tear both edges, not thinking, hey girl, you, why are you even wasting your time? Because one of them was going to be covered up. So um, I just you know, wanted a torn edge and I only really needed to tear one of the edges. So I'm going to start laying them out the way that I kind of want them on my egg. And uh, then I said, oh, I want to uh, distress the edges. So I pull out my vintage photo distressing ink and I distress the edges, uh, you know, to give it a 
uh, rustic touch to it. And so I just use that with my little finger dauber and my little vintage photo uh, ink and just do that. Yeah, if you've been following me for any length of time, you have seen me do this already. Now, I do want to share um, uh, one of my mess ups that I did. Um, I'm just going to attach the paper with some double sided tape. This is my uh, adhesive tape glider that it just has you know adhesive tape and I've had it for many years I got it from Michaels um, I do have it in my Amazon store but as you can see here I'm working at an angle you know not working upside down you know not upside down um, right side up like right in front of me and so when I put my paper on guess what my paper was sideways silly girl and so I ended up um, you know pulling all of that off and then kind of having to start over once I realized that my paper was going crooked and so um, once I realized that you need to put your egg in front of you so that you can see and make it straight. So I'm just sharing if, if you uh, do a project like this that you don't make my mistake. For the hanger for my egg, I'm going to use some beads from this garland that I picked up after the fall season from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be using five of those beads. I love the color of them already. I don't have to do anything to them. And then I just make a loop and going to tie that off so that, uh, you know, it kind of stays. And then that loop is what I will uh, hang on my hanger. Anyway, so then I just tied it off in a knot about three or four times so that it would, you know, be secure. All right, so then now I'm going to make a messy bow for this. And I love this uh, jute ribbon that I got. I don't know what it's called. I guess it's ribbon uh, from Hobby Lobby in the spring section. And so, guys, I just cut off just, you know, different uh, strips of burlap. And I have just different uh, laces and trims and all of that fun stuff. Just pulled out colors from this egg and just you know, layering them all. Then I'm going to gather all of that together. Um, I also have just some extra strings from burlap that were kind of like hanging out. And I'm like, you know what? I love that. It just makes my messy, messy bow a little bit messier. And uh, so I just gather it all together. I secure everything with a pipe cleaner. And then I use my needle nose pliers to get a really good, you know, tight, um, you know, tightness to the back. And then I just attached it to you know glued it on to the corner of my egg and uh, I love the way that this is turning out I hope you do too I also added some fine excelsior uh, into the middle of the bow just to add a bit more whimsy and then I had made one of these felt flowers it's like a peachy pinky kind of tint uh, and I just put that there in the middle and I just think it looks really pretty all right now I'm gonna make just a small sign I'm just gonna hand letter with my fine sharpie marker happy Easter I put my happy dots on there I also so, uh, you know, give it the torn edges just to give it the jagged edge. I'm going to use that same vintage photo distress ink and, you know, just kind of roughen it up a little bit just the way that I like. And then I'll attach it to my sign just using some pop dots or foam dots, photo dots, whatever you call them. Uh, I just glued those on the back just to give it a little bit of height. I glued the smaller sign on there and thought that oh okay this project is complete so when I was doing the pictures and um, you know setting it up for my video I'm like oh gosh girl that is too small <laughs> so I went back and um, I took that small sign off I did a little bit larger one I just hand lettered happy Easter I'm gonna do the same technique as far as uh, doodling around and adding some vintage photo distressing ink I will crinkle it up to give it that 
aged look and uh, then I, I will attach uh, it to the front of my sign with some of those foam dots just to give it some height and I love this sign a little bit better so it just really you know I really I don't really know what I was thinking but once I put it on there and was taking my pictures for the video I'm like oh no that little sign that little sign is too little so that's why I went back and um, made um, another sign for the egg and also I had just put little commas or just little white highlight in each of the happy dots which I forgot to do on the little small one so I'm glad that I redid it and I hope that you do too <laughs> I am using two of these paper mache tulips. Now I picked these up at the Target dollar spot a few years ago. They were regularly three dollars and so I've had them in my stash for a few years and didn't really know what I wanted to do with them until I was inspired to make some cute tulips using some of this beautiful fabric as well as some gingham. I'm going to be adding that to that as well. So um, I was going to add some gingham just do the uh, heat transfer method of adding Mod Podge and then adding fabric but I changed my mind kind of mid project here that's what I do a lot and I pulled out some school glue and I'm going to be making the crackle uh, finish look on the stems of these tulips and so what I do is I give a generous amount of the school glue and then I just spread it out with a foam brush I let it dry to a tacky consistency and then I'm going to go over it with the um, color of paint that I want to be on top because I want the white color to show through the cracks and so this is Moss Waverly chalk paint and that is a uh, that you can pick that up at Walmart. I just love this color for projects this time of year. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, let each side dry and then add the crackle to like the sides and then also the other side because this is two-sided and let that dry completely. So this beautiful fabric came from Walmart and I'm just, using my little mini iron, my little Cricut mini press, just to press out the creases. And then I'm going to give a coat of Mod Podge, let that dry. And then I'm gonna be using the heat transfer method if you're not uh, familiar with that, just really quick. You put a layer of Mod Podge on your surface, let that dry. Then using a little mini iron, I use a mini Cricut uh, heat press and then just uh, the little, the white paper that you saw that is parchment paper. I use that as a barrier and then I just iron that on the top of my uh, tulips the way that I like. I make sure that I get all the way around the edges so that I don't have any of the fabric coming up. So I'm just, I have this checkered or gingham fabric uh, in green and white and so I think it's perfect. I just tie it around to make a bow for each of the stems. And because this fabric is limp, I use my Stiffen Quick. This is a stiffening spray. You can get this anywhere like fabric and sewing supplies are sold. Uh, and it really does make a difference just with some limp fabric or limp ribbon just for your projects. And I just absolutely love the way that this turned out. I absolutely love cute whimsical faces and these farmhouse rustic bunnies are so stinking cute. I also made some, I call them my picket bunnies and what's special about them is I'm using the ears I'm using. They are poinsettias. Uh, I just use those. I had some of those on hand and I use those for some of the projects. Here's one that I did using a hair 
headband that had some uh, pink and white and that is included in a different video I will link to that as well because guys I do love cute whimsical faces and making these cute bunnies there is no exception so let's go ahead and get into how I made them these poinsettia flowers that I have um, left over now these beautiful poinsettia flowers um, are from a vendor I know I'm gonna get questions about that where did you get those from I had them in my stash um, from Christmas uh, for the local gift shop that I work part-time for and I thought that they would be perfect for these cute little farmhouse bunnies now did you notice that that bunny had a black nose on it and so I wanted to make a farmhouse bunny so I was playing around with the black nose well then I was like mm, those look too much like mice so I ended up going ahead and painting over those black noses and then adding some glitter to the nose as for some extra sparkle and pizzazz so I wanted to explain that part because in some of the video you will see uh, some of the bunnies with black noses, but that's the reason why. Okay, I um, started with these uh, scrap wood, they're two by fours. Um, I will leave the size of the bunnies here on the screen so that you will know. I gave each of them two coats of white chalk paint. Then now I am going uh, around the sides doing some shading with my gray paint and uh, starting out I just dip half of my brush in paint half of my brush in water blend it on a paper towel then I go around it and I uh, give the shading like that now since these were rustic farmhouse bunnies I did um, a uh, layer of gray then I go back over it and give a layer of the brown because I like the combination of both of those for my rustic farmhouse um, little things here and uh, so anyway for the cheeks I like my cheeks to be more rectangle up and down so I'm just using a stencil brush and stippling on some cheeks and then I'll go back over and just give some white shading and also shade around the cheeks and make the eyes and just make everything so cute and fun Thank you. 
Okay, I am calling these my picket scrap bunnies. Uh, and the reason is, is because this was an old fence. These boards were that my uh, brother and sister-in-law gave it to me many years ago. And I just never did anything with them until now because that is what I do. I'm such a craft hoarder. Anyway, so um, these boards were the long uh, pickets. They were like, you know, for a fence. Anyway, so I just had my husband cut them down so that I could um, maneuver uh, and handle them a little bit better. And so what I did is I gave each of them two coats of white chalk paint. Now when I say two coats, I didn't go very heavy. I wanted it to be enough coverage, but I didn't want it to be totally solid. I hope that that makes sense. For my painted bunnies here, I have been using a small wooden hearts. And it's just because I have an abundance of those left over from my woodworking days and my craft show days. So I have a lot of these on hand. You can get them uh, anywhere unfinished. Uh, wood pieces are sold like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, any of those places have unfinished wood in different shapes and sizes. Um, a, a furniture plug would work, a button, a uh, if you really want a heart and you don't have it, you can cut it out of foam board or scrapbook paper, a cardboard, an old cereal box, fun foam, uh, construction paper, um, or you can get, you know, someone to cut some wood shapes out for you that would work as well. Don't stress about it. Um, that is one of the things that I, uh, uh, questions that I got is what can they use for a nose? Um, anything, I've even seen people use old bo bottle caps. Um, search Pinterest because you will get a ton of ideas. Anyway, so I'm just continuing here by just shading my uh, bunnies, just adding some dimension and depth and making them really cute.
this cute grapevine cross came from Hobby Lobby. I picked it up during their 40% off Easter sale, but you may be lucky and get it for more percent off. I also have a styrofoam disc. Uh, now I'm just uh, removing the paper and then what I'm going to do is take my serrated knife and cut down a little bit of the backing because it sticks up just a tad tall taller than what I wanted it to so I just uh, cut that off now how I'm going to attach it to the wire is I have some of uh, some black wire now I if if I can find this in the automotive section at the Dollar Tree, that is my favorite place to find wire. It's flexible and I can bend it very easy and it holds things for me. So what I do is I just uh, brought the wire up from the back and just kind of crisscrossed it and, you know, secured it to the frame. Then to cover up that styrofoam, I have my fine Excelsior that I like to get at Hobby Lobby or either Joann's Craft Store. And I'm just going to put a little bit on there. Then I'm going to start layering on my greenery. Now this, this bush came from Walmart. And uh, so I'm just cutting it all apart. And then I just start sticking uh, some of the florals in around the outside. And then I get to a certain point and then I want to make my bow because then I'm going to stick the rest of the greenery around my bow once I get that. So I pulled out these burlaps, this quarter full, uh, two and a half inch burlap came from Hobby Lobby. And so what I'm using here is uh, a uh, easy bow maker and if that is something that you are interested in I will have my affiliate link in the description box below this is my favorite way to make my bows and what I do is I uh, pinch it in the middle I de depends on how big the loops that I want uh, these are five inch loops and then I twist it in the middle so that the right side of the ribbon is on top and then I just cut off the tails and so then I I have this uh, window pane mesh ribbon that also came from Hobby Lobby. I'm just cutting off a piece of that, uh, actually two pieces, and I put them as like an X pattern. Um, I'm not putting loops as far as the window pane. Uh, the only loops that I have in this bow is actually those bottom loops of that quarter fold ribbon. And so then uh, I just cut off a little bit of the quarter fold ribbon as well, just to make some tails. I like to do that for my bows just to give it some character. And so then I have this uh, one and a half inch burlap. And now that uh, roll came from Sam's. And so I just am dovetailing the ends of that and pinching it in in the middle uh, and then I will make a loop mm, probably about a four inch loop uh, and so then I make several loops of that and I have that one tail going up and then I'll have the other tail going down I just really feel that that just gives a little interest to the bow and then I will secure everything with a, a zip tie and so uh, you know just kind of pulling it all up together I kind of keep it try to keep my fingers together so that I can get my zip tie around it. And then to attach it to the actual styrofoam, I'm just using a U-pin. I just stick it through the back of that uh, zip tie and then I, you know, glue it to secure it in place. So then once my bow is secured onto my styrofoam or in the styrofoam, then I start adding in the other things that I want. Now I wanted to make this cross uh, more farmhouse or that uh, the person who wants to display it could display it all year round. So I'm just choosing some burlaps, uh, some whites, not really any flowers to it just because uh, I, again I just wanted it to be a uh, very basic very farmhouse so these greenery bushes that you know I can find at Walmart or uh, any other place that are reasonably priced as well as have a lot of different 
greenery textures with which has a lot of like uh, just different foliage and stuff attached in one bush is my that's my jam I love that I, I'm very drawn to those I guess that's what I'm trying to say and so then uh, just for some added texture and just different uh, color I have a couple of stems of this eucalyptus that is also from a Walmart and so I just cut those off now sometimes if the stem is just a little too long uh, one of the tips that I have is just to cut it apart and then bend uh, that stem down from the top only because so that it won't slide out uh, because you know sometimes if you cut a stem off uh, like in the middle then it has a tendency to slip off and you don't want that to happen and so I just bend part of that stem down and so then that just kind of holds it in place so that I can glue it there and everything looks really nice. So I'll continue to add uh, greenery and fluff my bow as I go along. That's why I always use wired ribbon. That way if it gets uh, pushed down or smushed a bit, it will pop back up just by just fluffing it up. And so then uh, just to mask all of the sides of the uh, styrofoam and just to fill in, I'm just taking more of that fine excelsior, just kind of pushing it in places, gluing it down. I love to add it to the center of the bow. I just really think that it adds a lot of uh, texture and just some wispiness. And I just love the way that this cross turned out. I'm really tempted to make one for myself. Uh, but I just love this. I had this idea in my head and I'm so happy the way that it turned out and I hope that you did too. To cover up the back, I just took a piece of felt and just hot glued it to the back of the styrofoam where the styrofoam was exposed. And so I didn't want that. That kind of looked a little tacky. I know I didn't get a picture of that, but I just cut off a square and just hot glued it to the back. And I just love the way that this turned out. Out. I hope you do too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day and we'll see you in the next video.